Welcome again to Wood Turning with Dick. Wood Turning with Dick. Wood Turning with Dick. Editing the last few videos, I did notice what a fool I looked with that facial hair, so that's gone. Shaved. So, bald. <laughs> Anyway, on to business. You may have seen in another video, I found this in amongst my drying out pile. Natural Edge Bog Oak Bowl is what I'll be showing you the how to's and not to's and to do's. At some point, I've used a flat spade drill bit to dig out the center enough for the attachment for my lathe so that I just about squeeze in there once I've drilled a hole big enough for the screw. Bark on this is very uneven. Lots of chunks have fallen off. It's a 5,000 year old piece of wood that's been submerged in a peat bog and preserved. Everything cleared, everything tight, on slow speed. Need to rough that down now. Flat spot there. Otherwise, that's the outside rough down. I've got to bring this up and round so that will disappear. Before I finish rounding that, I've got enough room there to put the chuck grip in. And I'm going to call it an innie because this is going to make one particular wood turning friend of mine laugh. Then I'm going to finish rounding it to make a nice, nice bowl shape, nice gradual curve as you come up round to a flat at the top side here. Makes it more appealing to the eye, I think. I'm going to stop there with the chisels. It's not an ideal chisel finish. There's cracks here, loads of cracks here. This is still the bark on the side. Now this is going to peel off as a lot of it has been as I've been turning. Here's the next important thing. When people sand natural edge bowls, they tend to have the lathe running and the sandpaper comes around and it flaps on the exposed pieces of bark bowing it over on the corners when you've got something that's so uneven like this all the way around if you're sanding with it flapping around it's going to catch on the edge and you're going to get these nasty curves i'm going to sand up to here as it's turning this point here because that's the only areas where it's whole the rest of it even though it's not the best tool finish in the world i'm going to sand by hand in circles all the way around, watching this outside edge so it doesn't bow over as I come in like this. That's deep enough chuck grip in there. I might, actually, I might just take that a little bit deeper. Obviously, the deeper you go with the chuck grip, the less bowl you've got on the inside and the more risk you've got of going through the bottom of the, of the bowl. When there's so many cracks in bog oak or any wood, and if you're using a inny, as I like to call it, watch there's no cracks that come right to the edge of, of this because you're putting expanding pressure, you're gonna open up that crack, you're potentially looking for trouble. One lovely thing about bog oak and turning bog oak and why I love it so much is you can't overheat it with friction and get those nasty heat cracks. You've already got these cracks in it. It's semi-fossilized. It's not going anywhere. So you don't have to be cautious about how hard you're pressing, how long you're spending in one area. 
to get rid of some of those nastier tool marks, I used 40 grit by hand, circular motion. Big tip for you here. The next grade you go for, 80 grit, go in one direction. If you started with this motion, start with the 80 grit with the one, one motion all the way around. So you can see if there's any 40 grit marks left. When you move on to the next sandpaper, come in this direction. And then you can see when you got rid of all the all the marks from the 80 grit. So next one, 120, until I need to sand the sealer it, then I'll film it again. I've just finished sanding with 320 grit. You can see where, where I've sanded to with it turning, the shinier piece. This is all finished by hand, literally circles, opposites, opposites. Now onto 400. I'm going to do the whole lot by hand. No more turning while it's still on the lathe and held securely. I can run with the grain and get rid of any minor, minor sanding marks. I'm going to do that right up to the rim, looking very carefully at the finish, running with the grain of the wood, running with those cracks, then 600 grit, running with the grain as well on 600, and then 1000. Sand the sealer, take the sand sealer off. Time for my favourite bit, the sand the sealer. Bog oak is incredibly absorbent. Feel free to layer it on fairly thick. And then you're going to nib it off afterwards with some extra fine wire wool. Just to get rid of any little clumps of sand the sealer. The darker it is, the older it is. This particular piece came from a tree that was carbon dated at 5,300 years old, which is kind of cool to think that this tree was up and growing before the stones were at Stonehenge. That's quite staggering. Time for the moth and mirror stamp. Lovely. 792nd piece I've made for moth and mirror. So I've just got an old screwdriver, all loose bits of bark. This is only for bog oak, this process. Any other natural edge bowl it's not going to work on because you want the, the bark in pristine condition. Now I do need to tidy that up and here's the solution. Well, it was the original solution that I upgraded. Now mask and face shield for this. Okay, so there you go. My original intent for this was to have a fairly small bowl and a really fat rim to really show all this lovely bark off, or edge of the tree. You can't really call it bark anymore because I've taken all the bark off with the grinder and wire brush. But having looked at the profile of this, I'm going to aim for a half inch rim. That might work really nicely. And then... What I might do, if you've seen some of my other videos, there's an element of gilding involved. And if it had been a small bowl in the middle here, I would have asked my partner to gild the inside of the bowl. But on this occasion, 
I think I'm going to ask her to gild the rim. If she can. I'm sure she can. She once told me she can gild anything. I've since offered her many things to gild, but she's chosen not to gild those things. Well, sanding the inside was a heck of a lot harder work than sanding the outside. Lots of 40 grit, 80 grit, 120, 180, 240, 320, 400. Sand a sealer now. Really is a lovely black piece of bog oak. Such dark, dark colours. Very elegant piece sat inside somebody's home. I realise now grinding all the bark down and off like I did was a reasonably large waste of time. I didn't realise I'd be turning a thin edge bowl, but heck, it's turned out quite nice. And the next question is, what is Lenore going to gild? She's either going to do all this bark or she's going to gild this entire area in the center and scrape it all off with a scalpel so that the gilding, champagne gold probably, will be just left in the grain and some in the cracks. Be interesting to see what she does. Wait for that to dry. 400 nib, 600 nib. 